Okay, we're gonna start a new topic on Markov chain Monte Carlo or MC, MC for short. And in a few minutes, you'll see why uh, this name is used for this technique. Uh, just a quick reminder that uh, in the Bayesian model building, we have uh, two components. We have likelihood. And we have the prior. And the likelihood is a function of the model parameters and the data. So let's say we have a data set we're going to call it D. And let's say we have a supervised learning problem. So we have pairs of X and Y and just a sequence of X, I and Y, I pairs. And we have uh, small n observations. And then we have some statistical model that relates X to Y. So it takes X as an input and uh, generates y as the output and this model is parameterized by parameter theta and the goal of the bayesian learning is to learn the posterior probability distribution of those parameters given the observed data set and we use the Bayes rule to calculate that so we use likelihood times the prior and we divide by the total probability and we integrate uh, theta out. Okay. So this is just the probability over y given x at the bottom. So this is the basic setup. And uh, the uh, common characteristic of uh, Bayesian learning is that the bottom part is hard to calculate. So this integration over theta, this part here is hard to calculate. And we talked in the previous um, parts of the course, there is a set of uh, pairs of prior and the likelihood when we actually can calculate this. And this is a case of a conjugate prior, so things become analytical. This integral can be written down in uh, analytical form explicitly. But in whenever you're outside of this world of conjugate priors, uh, you don't have analytical solution. And whenever things become high dimensional, whenever you have high dimensional set of parameters theta, the numerical integration fails. So this trapezoid rule that uh, numerical analysis would use to calculate an integral doesn't work in this setting. So we have to do something else. And, and the MCMC is the technique to do that. And we're going to motivate MCMC by looking at the problem of uh, shuffling uh, cards, a deck of cards. So let's say you have, uh, we're going to do a quick example. So let's say you have a deck of cards and there are 52 cards in the deck, 52 cards in the deck. And what you want to do, you want to generate random shuffles. So essentially each shuffle has an equal probability of appearing and uh, you want to generate sample from this distribution over the shuffles. And there are 52 factorial shuffles. And if you calculate this, uh, this is approximately uh, 10 to the power 68. And this is a large number. Uh, it's actually slightly less than the number of particles in the observed universe. And if you try to do it in a straightforward manner, meaning that you generate all possible shuffles and you assign them some identifier and then just put a vector of those identifiers. So each shuffle has an ID 
and then you flip a coin or roll a dice with 10 to the power 68 sides and you randomly select one of the shuffles so so naive way naive way enumerate all shuffles and then roll dice roll a dice well, even enumerating and writing down all possible shuffles is a very tedious task and actually even using modern computers with large amounts of memory, that's hard. And we have to do something else. Naive way doesn't work. So imagine, imagine the following uh, algorithm. So let's say you take a top card from the deck and then you select a random location for this card. So you select one out of 52 numbers, so actually 51. So let's say you throw it, throw dice with uh, 51 sides and uh, 31 comes up. So you take the top card and put it into position 31. And then you do the same with the next top card. You throw a dice and you put it in the position that dice tells you. So after doing it for a couple hundred times, essentially you'll have a random shuffle. And you just generated a random shuffle by doing very cheap operations. And each operation was a monte... Uh, uh, a step in the Markov chain. So essentially, uh, uh, your state is the sequence of cards in the in the in the deck. And what you do, you take the current sequence and you just chain the top card. So this is a Markov chain, and each time you do the same thing. So you slightly change your configuration of the deck. And you do this Markov chain multiple times. So at the end of this Markov chain, you have a random draw. So you have a Monte Carlo sample from the possible set of 52 factorial shuffles. So that's why this technique is called Markov chain Monte Carlo. Essentially, you want to generate this random walk in the space of possible shuffles so that after a few steps of doing this random walk, you generate a Monte Carlo sample from all possible shuffles. So Markov chain is uh, changing position of the top card. And uh, Monte Carlo part, the second MC, is at the end Let's say after um, 100 mark of chain steps, also we can, it's essentially a random walk. The resulting shuffle is just the sample from the set of random shuffles. You get Monte Carlo sample.